There really wasn't an amateur scene. There were some islands of amateur scenes in the world, but as a global phenomenon, it, it didn't exist. It really started with the pro leagues and it grew downwards. There were no uh, you know, organizing structure around it. There were no unified or consistent rules. Uh, there were no world championship, regional championships, even local championships. And so it was uh, you know, a state of, of chaos, but also of just complete disorganization. There, there needed to be you know, a set of distinct, separate rules for amateur. Uh, that is said was very distinct and different from what the professional rules were. And of course, that wasn't going on you know, in, in 2012 and, and prior to that. As we began expanding the professional mixed martial arts through the UFC, in many countries, we were asked the question of who is going to regulate your event. And many times that led locals on the ground to uh, ask us about, is there a, an amateur federation that regulates the sport? Because you know they could be the regulator for professional events also. And so that sort of began some of the discussions that we had in particular in Sweden. So uh, we began discussions with uh, a group, uh, George Saltfeld was one of the members of that group uh, that was excited about bringing amateur mixed martial arts to Sweden, but also had aspirations to regulate the professional side of the sport. Lawrence was absolutely one of the first people who understood the importance of, of having an, an amateur body that could bring people in from all over the world that was more inclusive, but that was not only about competition, but also community development, making sure that people are training safely, uh, education and so on. Oh, he's caught him. Big shot there, the referee stepped in. Wow. Every major sport had an amateur foundation or an amateur movement that was both key to generating talent generating interest in the sport, but as said, also made it part of you know, the permanent sports landscape. We certainly looked at the Olympic movement as a model for the regulation and the organization of uh, amateur mixed martial arts, and that was sort of the direction of the discussions that we took. The early meetings were, uh, were interesting. We want to create an amateur body, we want to, to take MMA to the Olympics. That was the vision, and then, then in the early meetings uh, there was a lot, lot about, oh, this cannot be done, this is just too big. Where will we start? Which countries? How? We were six guys getting together. Two had made more plans than everybody else. I was sure that this was going to be the future of MMA to get MMA legalized in France. I've been asked by the sport ministry if we have an international body. And I was saying no. <laughs> so you go back and do your work in your, in your sport and then come back and then we can talk, you know. I said, we need to have an international body. Since day one, we had a very nice sponsor, UFC. They understood right away our vision. They have supported us uh, uh, financially, yes, but even more with ideas, with the uh, with people, with, uh, uh, with knowledge. We felt it was, just, it was just so important to be part of supporting uh, the growth of the amateur uh, part of mixed martial arts because that is the true foundation of much of the content is distributed on our Fight Pass platform. We also support exposure for the events via our social media platforms. And you know, many of our athletes you know, also have, have come through the, the ranks of, of IMMAF uh, amateur uh, over the years. From the beginning, the vision was to get to the Olympics. It's still there and we're really working hard for it. Um, and and I'm, I'm sure we will achieve it.